For thousands of years, spreading the spoken word was limited by how far someone could shout. And then, about a hundred years ago, something changed! The invention of radio meant one voice could reach thousands, then millions. The first mass medium is still going strong all over the world. 997 now. Crank up the volume, play it loud. In San Francisco on the CBS station 997 now is Letty B. Buenos dias, it's Letty B, dude. The energy all over the Bay today is so awesome. She's playing music and using technology that would have been unrecognizable to those early radio pioneers. However, she still sees herself as part of that tradition. We keep it local. We live here, I live here. I go through the same things if there's like an accident on the way to work, you know, that people are stuck in. Most likely, you know, they're going to know what I'm talking about or something happens on BART on the train here, or, you know, and it, it helps that I can relate and I live the life that they're living. News at the speed of life. Your life. For years, people have been predicting the death of radio, but radio definitely ain't dead. In the US, like the UK, over 90% of adults listen every week. You might think that good old steam age radio is the absolute antithesis of the modern computer internet age as exemplified in Silicon Valley. However, there are plenty of software engineers here in Palo Alto who are betting big that the medium of Marconi, the goons and Terry Wogan has a loud and bright future. We're looking at two companies with very different approaches to how radio can evolve the first would be a godsend if you ever wake up, say, wanting to hear a Nigerian hip-hop station or a bit of all-hits radio from Malaysia. TuneIn says it can deliver 100,000 radio stations streamed to all your devices anywhere in the world. It's the last mass market medium moving online, and so as a result, what's happening is the proliferation of these connected devices are meaning people from around the world can consume any radio station from anywhere. It used to be that you could only consume a radio station if you were in, within like 30 or 40 miles of the terrestrial tower. But now on your smartphone, instead of 70 options locally, you have 100,000 options from around the world. TuneIn is backed by venture capital from companies including Google. They're seeking to smash the classic business model for commercial radio, which is based on local ad sales to local businesses. So here we are in Palo Alto, let's say I'm listening to a radio station in the United Kingdom and in the UK those ads aren't going to be relevant to me but perhaps there's a local radio station here in Palo Alto that could serve and sell those ads for me in particular and then we could revenue share that with the broadcaster someplace else no matter where they are. Okay, CBS News Time 1218. We're heading to Pleasanton to check out the. But what if the future of radio isn't internet based audio streaming? At the moment, most modern smartphones contain a chip in them that allows you to receive an FM radio signal. The same signal you get in your house or in your car. It's just that most carriers disable that chip. Change that, and well, suddenly most people are walking around with a radio in their pockets that's free to use and doesn't require gobbling up your expensive data allowance. Out of San Francisco, traffic at the limit on North That's the idea behind Next Radio, a new service just launched in the United States. The signal comes over FM, but extra data like interactive ads, special offers and program information comes via the internet. One of the big US carriers, Sprint, is now promoting the service. The, the where we step off and make it more compelling and more innovative is to use the FM, what the audio is for the FM, to trigger events that make it more interactive. So as the song is playing, while we might display artist and title and album art information, we're offering the, the listener a chance to give feedback. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Would you like to share this with your friends of what you're listening to on which station? Um, we're offering uh, promotional things like automating the call to the station or text to win campaigns. Uh, we're taking the calls to action of a live radio station automating them and presenting them to the consumer as an option to interact. And FM has its advantages. It's far more robust in the case of an emergency than internet streaming, making it pretty useful in earthquake-prone San Francisco. In the UK, though, the government is looking to kill off FM in favour of DAB, although how soon and how total, we don't yet know. So get in the car.
But this is just a debate about delivery platforms. However they listen, radio survives because audiences value it. The audience will always want to connect with local radio personalities. You know, um, you can get music anywhere. You have a lot of different devices to get it, but it's in between the records that uh, radio makes the connection with the audience. So it's that personal connection. People want to be connected with other people. They want to be part of a tribe. They want to know that uh, they're in a group with other people. They want to be accepted, and that's what radio brings. Radio has survived a century of supposedly fatal challenges, from the movies, then television, from tapes, CDs, MP3 players, and it's now surviving the internet and streaming music services. There are plenty of people betting plenty of money. It will survive and thrive for another century or even two. Thank you, Marconi.